that the Lord was the lily of the valleys. And sometimes we say lily of the valley, but he's actually valleys. He's not the lily of a valley, but he's the lily of all valleys. And we want to give him praise where praise is due. Help me sing for him this morning. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, is a lily of the valleys, bright and morning star. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, is the God of every nation. Bless His name. Oh, sweet Jesus. Jesus is the lily of the valleys, the bright and morning star, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus is the God of every nation, bless his name. How I love him, oh how I love him, how I love him. Is the lily of the valleys, the bright and morning star. How I love him! How I love him! He's the God of every nation. Bless His name. Oh, He's my Savior. He's my Savior. He's a lily of the valleys, bright and morning star. He's my savior. He's my savior. He's the God of every nation. Bless His name, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus, He's a lily of the valleys, a bright and morning star. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, He's the God of every nation. Bless His name. He's the God of every nation. Bless His name. Oh, He's the God of every nation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bless His holy name. This morning, scripture reading will come from 1 Peter 4, the seventh verse. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious, watching, be watchful in your prayer. And above all things, be fragrant, love one for another. Love will cover a multitude of sin. Love will cover a multitude of sin. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, but the remainder of the doers of his holy word. Precious Heavenly Father, to the God who sits high and looks low. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for another day that wasn't promised to us, Father God. And we, Father God, thank you for bringing us to the household of faith this morning, Father God, as we come in prayer, Father God. We just come in and lifting up your holy name, Father God, and thank you for another day, Father God. We had 10,000 times, Lord, we could not thank you enough, Father. And we just thank you, Father God, for the praise team of the choir this morning, Father God, as they sing songs of honor unto you, Father God, you bless them and bless their ministry, Lord God, and Father, we pray for the priest word this morning, Father God, that it will go forth, Father God, that we can apply to our lives on a daily basis, Father, Father God, we lift up the Shepherd and Wiley families this morning, Father God, in their times of loss, Father God, be with those families, Father God, let them know, Father God, that you do not make a mistake, Father God, you will not put more on than they can bear, Father God. God, you send your word. We may endure for a night, Father God, but let us know joy will come in the morning, Father God. 
Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for this day that you've allowed us to assemble here in the household of faith. Lord God, we want to give you glory, give you honor, give you praise. And we pray for those who are in route to give them safe travel. Lord God, we thank you for everything you've done and everything you want to do. For us in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, community. Morning. Good morning, community. Good morning. How many of y'all know that God has got a blessing with your name on it? It makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see it through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. So get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready for your miracle. For your miracle. Get ready. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready. Get ready for your miracle. For your miracle. I know you've been hurting deep down inside, but let me encourage you. It's gonna be alright. Troubles and trials. Come to make you strong. Keep on believing. You keep holding on. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. Get ready. For your miracle. Get ready. For your blessing. Get ready. For your miracle. God got a blessing. Come on, if you really believe it, God got a blessing. God got a blessing. God got a blessing. Come on, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. With my name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. With my name on it. With your name on it. With my name on it. With your name on it. With my 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 name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. If you believe it, help me say, God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, God's got a blessing with your name on it. You can't have it. You can't have it. You can't have it. Oh, you can't have it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. You can't have it. Oh, you can't have it. It's mine. You can't have it. It's mine. You can't have it. Oh, you can't have it. You can't have it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. You 
you can't have it. Oh, you can't have it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Last time. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Put your name on it. Put your name on it. Thank <laughs> you. 
said that reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. I know it was the blood for me. And so we're so, so glad, so glad, so glad. Did that not just cheer our hearts, stir our spirits, bless us? Amen. In the house of the Lord. You don't mind finding a couple of people I custom now that we spend a little time in corporate prayer. Interceding one for the other. There are many on our prayer list that we're praying for. And God would touch. God would heal. God would deliver. And so as we find three or four people in our circle that we can pray one for the other. And as we go before the throne of God, just know the blood still works. It still works. So we lift up one another and their needs and whatever is going on, whatever is happening in your world, in your space, we want to lift that up. So Sister Sarah here reminds me of Sister Annie White that we continue to pray for her recovery, that God will continue to restore and continue to heal. So those that you know of that are going through online, that you join us now in prayer and you come in agreement that God would do what only God can do. He would heal broken bodies and broken hearts and broken minds, broken relationships, broken souls, from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. That the anointing of God would flow in this place. For that blood that has given us access into the Holy of Holies, where we can come boldly and obtain mercy all over the house, all over the house. My house shall be a house of prayer for all nations, for all people. So we come now to call upon this great God, this mighty God, this prayer hearing God, that he would move in our situation. His arm is not short, Beloved, that he cannot say, his ear is not dull, that he cannot hear. And whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, God is able. We thank God for Sister Ward being with us, that God will continue to touch. For the chambers, God continue to touch. All of those that are here with us by sacrifice. They're here by sacrifice. They're going through, but they're here. They're here. So we're believing God, we're trusting God to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. All over the house, all over the house, all over the house. Father, we ask you to touch every need, every burden, every care. God, we lift it up to you. We ask you to move. We ask you to move. So grateful, so grateful, so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is within us, we bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And again, we are indeed so blessed 
by the manifest presence of Almighty God being in this house, in this place. Amen and amen. If we have any first time visitors with us, any first time guests, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand, just lift your hand. Anyone visiting here for the first time, this is your first time. All is comfortable, all is family. And so let's just put our hands together for everyone that made it to the house of the Lord. Again, we're indeed so, so grateful. And can we give that choir another big God bless you? Yeah. Amen. They did a wonderful job being back for the first time. And we are still working out issues, but we're so grateful, so grateful that we are at this place and at this point in time. Amen. If you um, if you have your Bibles, you don't mind standing in honor of the reading of God's word and reverence to him and his word as we would read it, starting in Ephesians chapter number four. We're still in this great book of Ephesians as we're discussing all of our spiritual riches in Christ and all that we have in him, all that he's done for us, all that he's provided for us. Everything we need is in Christ. How many believe that? Come on, if you believe that, say amen. And everything we need is in Christ Jesus. Chapter one, around verse number three said, he is blessed, blessed be the God, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means everything we need, he has already blessed us with. How many believe that? How many believe that? That's, that's true, that's true. But we're now in chapter four, um, and starting in verse 12, we'll uh, teach now from, from 12 to verse 16. So we're going to ask you to keep your Bibles open as we, uh, the Lord enables us to walk through the text this morning, a very important part of the book uh, for all of us as believers. And starting in verse 12, I'll be reading out of the New King James, whatever translation you have, you just keep on reading. Uh, most of you have King James, but whatever uh, translation. And we'll meet up in verse number 16, uh, starting verse 12 together. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, of the slight of man, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful body, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things to him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Father God, we're so grateful. So grateful for the reading of your word. So grateful for the freedom we have in this country to assemble ourselves together in the house of the Lord. Father, we ask now your anointing upon this word. Open our mouth that we might speak boldly the word of God. God, we ask you to bind everything that's not of you and release everything that is. God, give us clarity, give us understanding, give us insight, give us vision. Open our eyes that we might see, our ears that we might hear, our heart that we might retain this word. Let our heart be good soil, God, that it might give a crop of 60 and, and, and a hundredfold. God, we ask now your anointing and your blessing, and we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, for it belongs to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, and the people of God said, amen, amen. You may be seated. 
in the presence of God. There are notes in your bulletins. We ask you to follow along with us, jot down whatever the Lord is speaking to you uh, in your spiritual walk. My goal is to teach and equip and to train the people of God as you come now, as you have engaged in great worship, you've come before the throne of God and worship prepares our heart for the word. Amen. 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 Now we're, who's ready to hear from heaven? Right. Amen. Who's ready to Amen. hear a word from heaven? As, as we look, keep, keep your text open. As we look in the text, um, Paul here gives us principles of Christian growth. Uh, you might jot that down. We're talking about principles of Christian or church growth. How do we grow our church? What, what is God's plan for community Baptist church? What is his, his ultimate plan? Well, Jesus said over in Matthew 16 and 18, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And so we see here that Jesus makes the statement that he's going to build his church. Amen. He doesn't need me to build it. He doesn't need you to build it. Uh, he will build the church himself. Amen. And he'll do such a great job of it that the, uh, the, the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Amen. Amen. Against the church. And the church is not a building. It's not the bricks. It's not the structure. You are the church. Those that's been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, you are the church. It's not an organization. It's an organism. It's a living entity. It's a living thing with Christ as the head of the church. And we are the body. Amen. We are the body. So upon, upon this rock, Jesus says, I shall build my church. So, so thus the building of the church uh, must be according to God's plan. It must be according to God's plan, not Pastor Brooks plan, not any man's plan, but it has to be according to God's plan. And listen here, attempting to build a church by human means only competes with the work of Christ. And how many, you know, I do not want to compete with Christ. Amen. We don't do that. OK. And so as we've talked about in verses seven to verse 11, it is God's plan for gifted men that he saved and redeemed has given back to the church to equip the church, to build the church up and to develop his church according to the pattern that we're going to talk about in verses 12 to verse number 16. So in the text, there is a pattern that God's going to use in order to build the church and the church is you. It is you. In order to build you, there's a pattern that God has given in order to do that. So in our text now, we see the divine pattern for the building and the function of his church, the divine pattern. And so the first thing, if you're taking notes, the first thing is the progression of God's pattern. That's in verse number 12. Verse 11, we have to go back in order to get verse 12. It says that he's given some to be apostles. Apostles are those early disciples that, that he turned into apostles that wrote the gospel, that wrote the letters. Paul, Peter, John, all of those guys was foundational offices to the church, the apostles that God used to write the New Testament revelation. They're the apostles. And then the prophets are those that came alongside and began to confirm uh, what the apostles taught in their doctrine. And so those was the two early offices of the church that God gave to establish the foundational uh, ministry of the church, the apostles and the prophets. Late on, he gave uh, evangelists. Those are traveling missionaries that goes out to, to spread the gospel, whether at home or abroad. Missionaries, they go to evangelize and to share the gospel. And in sharing the gospel, people get saved. And in people getting saved, they're brought back to the church where the pastor and teacher, uh, every pastor ought to be a teacher, amen? And, and that pastor teacher will equip those people uh, to do uh, three things, three things. 
Uh, so they, they so they're given to the the, the 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 he's given pastors and teachers. And verse number twelve is critical. Look at it now. If you don't have a Bible, look at the screen. He's given uh, those gifted individuals for the perfection of the saints in order that they might do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. So my goal is to give you the tools that you need in order to mature to the place where you exercise your spiritual gift and your spiritual talent in order that you mature to a place that God can use you to do what the Bible calls is the work of the ministry. So my goal, your, your understanding has to be that if you're, if you're saved, if you're a child of God, then you are a minister of God. That every believer has a ministry. Every believer has a ministry. In order, that's what the text says. In order that we might equip the saints, uh, perfect the saints, that they might do the work of the ministry. So every believer, every child of God has been given a spiritual gift and a spiritual ministry. So you have a ministry. If you turn and look at, at your neighbor next to you, you're looking at it. If they're saved, you're looking at a minister. Come on, come on, come on. Look, look, look. You're looking at a minister. <laughs> Amen. You're looking. My goal, we have an average maybe of 80 to 100 people that attends this church. My assignment from Almighty God is that I equip every believer in the house in order that they come to a place in their Christian uh, walk that they can fulfill the ministry that God has given them to fulfill. So every believer in the house has been given a spiritual ministry and God considers you a minister. Amen. Doesn't mean that you have to go get a collar to put around your neck. Amen. Doesn't it mean you have to go get a long car to ride in. Amen. 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 You are a minister according to the word of God because every believer has been given a ministry. Amen. So you have a ministry if you're born again and God has given you a gift by his grace, in verse number seven, every one of us has been given grace according to the measure of the gift of God. So my role is to help you discover your spiritual gift in order that you might walk in your spiritual ministry. And so I want this church to have a hundred. My goal uh, before I go to heaven is that we have a hundred uh, ministers in this church. That's my goal is in this church, and if God should add to the number, then we would have 200 uh, ministers. But my goal is not that anyone would come to church and be a spectator in order to watch the show. That's not my goal, is that you come and you just spectate watching what goes on up here and not understanding that God has a plan and a place uh, for you in the body of Christ for you to exercise your spiritual gift and your spiritual calling. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you, Lord. It makes sense. Amen. That was given by heaven. I'm sure to wake someone up. Amen. And so it is, it is. I like the special effects. I love that. Amen. And so, so every one of you, so every one of you, God calls you a minister a minister. You've been given. It's no big ministers or small ministry. No, beloved, you are important to the call and to the body of Christ if this church is going to function the way God has ordained for this church to function. Amen. 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 So, so you are a minister. You are a minister. Come on. Can't turn and tell someone, and we might have to turn up the lights so no one gets sleepy, but tell somebody you are a minister. Come on, you're a minister. You're a minister. You've been given a ministry, beloved. And, 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 and so every one of us has been gifted. Gift. You got to believe that. That got to get down in your spirit, man, that God, if you're born again, you are called into ministry. The work of the ministry. Look at the text now. He says, and he gave himself some apostles and some prophets, evangelists, and some pastors and teachers 
for the perfection of the saints, to perfect you. That word perfect doesn't mean uh, perfect. It means there are two, there are three types of perfection in scripture, and these are not in your notes, but there's positional perfection, which means that, that when we get saved, God puts us in Christ, and in Christ, we are as perfect as perfect could be because we're in Christ. And in chapter one, verse uh, uh, around verse number four says that 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 accordingly as he has chosen us uh, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless in him. So once we get in Christ in position, he sees us holy and without blame. That's our position. Amen. That's our position. Now, uh, our ultimate perfection is over in Hebrews chapter three, where I mean, chapter number 12, where he talks about uh, that in heaven, there are the spirits of just men that have been made perfect. So when we get to heaven uh, before, if we get there before the rapture, then when we walk into glory, amen, we're going to be made perfect. Our spirit and our soul is going to be made perfect because uh, if, if we if, until the rapture happens, we have to leave our bodies here. Amen. You got to leave the body here. But to, to be absent from the body. Come on, Bible is to be present with the Lord. So our spirit and our soul go straight into heaven. And at that point, when they hit the gates of heaven, then the spirit of just men are made perfect. Because there's nothing in heaven that is not perfect. Right, Amen. Right. So, so when we get there, when our spirit and our soul get... Now, some of us, the way it looks now, <clears throat> the way it looks now, that some of us might not have to die. I think Paul was that way because of something that the Bible talks about that calls the rapture, where, where the dead in Christ shall be raised and those that are alive that when he comes, we shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the eye, in the air, so, so we shall never die. So there'll be a group of Christians on the planet that will never see death if Christ uh, uh, was to come in our lifetime, and it sure is looking like he's getting ready to come back. Amen? All the signs are pointing in that direction. And so, so that's the great thing. And so, and so, and then there's, there's practical uh, um, uh, perfection, and that's maturity. That's maturity. I think, listen, beloved, you don't hear anything else. I think the greatest need in the church is not more talent, it's not more money, but the greatest need in the church is maturity. If the saints will just mature. I believe that's the goal of marriage. I believe that's the goal of marriage, is that God takes a, an immature young man, an immature young lady, and he puts them together in order to complete what mom and dad didn't finish. Oh, I know, I know that was, that was right. Because it, it, it makes you understand that you cannot do this by yourself and you got to be willing to die to yourself uh -huh. in order to make this thing work. Amen? Amen. There's a whole lot to that. But, but, but I believe that, that I believe God puts you on your job in order to mature you. Amen? Because who matures us the greatest is difficult people and difficult situations. Uh -huh. And how many of you have difficult people in your life right now? Just look forward. Because we hope, hopefully not, they're not here this morning. But, but, but God, God puts those people there in order to mature us and to help us to grow. <clears throat> to help us to grow. And that's the only way we're going to grow, beloved is that we need those kind of people in our lives to pull out from us what we could not pull out on our own. Amen. And what they pull out is more Jesus because we can look, we cannot love those people without Jesus. Amen. Without Jesus. Amen. And so, and so listen, look, so, so the perfect of saints. So there are four things we talked about those last time. So my job, one thing that is to perfect the saints is the word of God. I come here to give you the word. That's, that's my only purpose uh -huh. is to give you the word of God, not to tell you stories, not, not, not to make you happy, not to make you sad, but my job is to give you the word of God. Just give you the word. That's that's all. I'm going to read out of this Bible and I'm going to go verse by verse by verse by verse by verse. Amen. Letting the word of God explain it. I, I, I give it to you. I explain it and I apply it. That's my job. 
give it to you, explain it and, and apply it. Amen. And, and so 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 to equip with the word prayer, prayer is critical. How many understand that prayer is important? Amen. That if we're going to be equipped to do the ministry, we have to be people of prayer. So we're going to get back to corporate prayer. And then also not only that, but 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 trials, trials come to mature us. And often trials come in bunches. Yeah. Come in. Yeah. James yeah. said it. He says, well, he, it's just, yeah. he says, count it yeah. Yeah. All, all joy when you encounter various yeah. trials, many of different sorts, knowing this, uh -huh. that the testing of your what now Faith. is producing patience. And how many in the house would say, Pastor Brooks, I could use some more patience? Yeah. Patience is staying under the trial yeah. until God is finished. Ladies, have you ever had a cake in the oven and you got that cake out too soon? Or you put that little toothpick and it wasn't done yet? Uh -huh. That's what happens to us. We get out of trials too early. And when God pokes us, we're not done yet. Because we didn't stay in the oven long enough in that heat until God was finished. Okay. And so, so, so kind of draw when you count a verse, knowing that the testing of your faith is producing what now? Patience. And then to you to let patience have her what? You got to let it go all the way to the end. You can't, you can't, you can't abort it. You can't leave the job. You can't leave the marriage. You can't leave the church. You can't leave your children. Children, you can't leave your parents. You got to stay in that thing till God has completed the work. Because someone here was thinking about leaving your job just because you're upset. How many know that you're going to find another one that's going to make you doubly upset? <laughs> Obedient, submission, all of those things, God is trying to develop character. See, someone said talent will take you places, but character will keep you there. Uh -huh. yeah. Character is who you are when no one else is watching. Uh -huh. Character is not Sunday morning. Character is Saturday night. Uh -huh. Character is who we are in private. Okay, I'm preaching. I'm yeah, preaching. Y'all yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not doing a lot, but I'm preaching. And, and when it gets quiet, I get happy because I know it's you're listening, right? You, you're listening online. You're listening, right? You're listening. And so the the so it's the it's the it's the uh, progression of God's pattern. So we give He gives us these things. Suffering is another thing. Suffering, suffering, suffering. Someone say suffering. The God of all grace, First Peter 5 and 10, um, after we have suffered a while, I'm here to tell somebody that suffering will not last always. Come on, I don't know who I'm, but suffering has a time limit on it. Okay, and then the God of all grace, he's going to come and he's going to perfect you and strengthen you. And he's going to give you roots in order to stand. God will never waste your suffering. He'll never waste it. He'll use it. And even now, while you're suffering, as a believer, he uses that suffering to bless someone else. That's right. You're right about that. Yes, sir. You ever wonder why you suffer? Why you go through what you're going through? Sometimes there's no reason for it. Sometimes there's a mystery to it. And it says over in Colossians, there's leftover suffering that we as Christians have to come to the back. And, and sometimes we have to endure things we don't even understand. But it's not for us. It's for somebody else. Joseph had to go through the pit. He had to go through the prison before he was promoted to the palace because in the pit and in the prison, God was preparing him to be a blessing to somebody else on down the road. 
And Joseph said at the end of the process in, in Philippians and in Genesis 50, 20, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. He just used you as a stepping stone to get me to where I needed to be to be the most effective in my ministry. Can you give the Lord glory right now? Come on, can you give the Lord glory right now? Even if you're in a pit or a prison, I'm here to declare the, the palace is on the way. And so here, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, and when you do your ministry, the body of Christ is edified. It's built up. But look, when you're not doing your ministry, the body of Christ cannot function. Can I go a little bit further? In verse 17, uh, verse uh, 13, we have the purpose of God's pattern. This is the purpose. This is what he's his purpose for every believer. He says, till we come. Someone say till. Till. That, that means we do this till. Till the, 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 the and the, the first thing is the unity of the faith. Till we all come. The word come means to arrive, to meet, to attain, to advance to a goal, to the unity of the faith. So God's trying to bring us to a unity of faith, to oneness. Now, he's not talking about subjective faith, uh, our faith in Christ, our belief in Christ. He's talking about objective faith, the word of God, that we come to a place of oneness in the word of God. We come to understand this Bible. How many know that your assignment on planet Earth is to get to know the Bible? Come on. How many know your assignment is to get, is to, get to know the book? First, the God of the book and to get to know his word. Amen. That's, that's why we have small groups. We have over maybe 40, half of the church involved in small groups. And, and it's been a blessing as they're going through Ephesians. I'm going through Ephesians. So it's just been a blessing. And the whole point is that we have to come to the oneness of the faith, the oneness of the faith. And, and so that has to do with the word of God. So it's, 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 it's the Christian doctrine. We have to know what we believe. Uh, I believe that most the, the disunity in, in the church, as in Corinth, was caused by a lack of knowing the faith and spiritual immaturity. That when there's conflict in the church, it's based on people just don't know the word and they're spiritual babes. How many have been around babies lately? How many are glad you're not around babies lately? <laughs> you know, babies are wonderful. They're wonderful. I love them. Where's, <clears throat> where's, uh, so say, where, where's the, the baby? Amen. So babies are lovely. Amen. They're lovely. They're just so cute and, and they're lovely. <clears throat> they just, I mean, they're just beautiful, except, you know, when they do that other thing. But they're just beautiful. <laughs> babies are, are beautiful. <clears throat> but in the church, it's a sad thing when Come people on. been in the church for 20 years. And has not grown past the state of childhood. Isn't that a sad thing? That the folks that used to get mad at certain things still get upset at certain things. Mm -hmm. There ought to be a place in spiritual growth. Listen, listen beloved, that you get past certain things. Come on, Come on, Paul says, when I was a child, I acted like a child. A child will throw a tantrum. A child will get upset. Uh -huh. A child will get mad. A child will get because they can't control their emotions. Right. But a grown man, a grown woman will get to a place they can take stuff uh -huh. and just keep on moving. Uh -huh. Yeah. Come, come on. Come. And, and so, so, so when you're when you're infant, amen. Just sit back and watch people. <laughs> And I used to uh, teach anger ma management uh, in the in the in the school district, and we used to talk about uh, well the whole subject was anger and how we deal with anger and how we manage anger. But when people, grown people, are in a state of anger, uh, anger, if you sit back and watch it, it's almost like two kids going at it. Yes, yes. yes. You know, we, um, um, Paul again in that when he says, "Be angry." But sin not. 
Don't let the sun. In fact, he says, don't have company with an angry person. Solomon says that you pick up their ways. Well, that's great preaching. Deep. We might not climb the mountain, but we're going to we, we're up there. Amen. And, and so, to, so we all we all come. See, we all come to, 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 to the unity of the faith, to, to the knowledge. The, 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 the second thing is the knowledge If you're taking notes, the knowledge of the son of God. That's a full, precise, correct knowledge of who Jesus is. How many understand that one of the keys to our growth is getting to know Jesus? And how many have been in the faith at least 10 years? Come on. Anybody been in at least 10 years? And how many, you know, in 10 years, you know, Jesus better than you knew him 10 years ago. Any, anyone know him in a deeper way? Well, we got to know him. We got to know him as savior. Right. But how many have gotten to know him as a healer? Come on. Come on. Come on. How many have gotten to know him as a deliverer? Come, come on. Come on. How many have gotten to know him as a way maker? Grandma says, what about a company keeper? <laughs> come on. About, what about the captain of a host? What about the king of Israel? Come on. How many have got to know him when you didn't have a mother? He was a mother. Didn't have a father. He was a father. Come on. Didn't have a, a friend. He was a friend. Even when you didn't have a friend, how many have yes. got to know him that late in the midnight hour, yes. he stepped in your situation and he brought you deliverance. Come yes. on, somebody. How many have gotten to know him that he is, yes. somebody says, sweeter today than he was yesterday. Can I get a witness? Yes. Paul says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So, so when you in the word, listen, beloved, you get to know the son of God. You get to know him better. You get to know him. And then, and then number three, it leads to spiritual maturity unto a perfect man. That word perfect means complete, full age, full grown man, a mature man, the stature of spiritual adulthood. And notice he says in the next verse 13, he says to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, he wants the church to grow as we get in the scriptures, as we get to know Christ better to a place of the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That that's, that's God's great desire for his children, that every believer without exception come to be like his son, come to look like Jesus. See, the goal is, is when people come into this church, they ought to see Jesus. They ought to hear Jesus. They ought to know Jesus. That's the stature of the fullness of Christ, that, that we ought to reflect Jesus in, in, in his character and his traits. That's a, that so, 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 so when they come in, they ought to see Jesus. Yes. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes. I remember reading an account that, that, that this one Puritan writer was saying that, that, that we ought to be so full of Jesus that if someone was to push our button, we just shot Jesus. Now, if someone push our button, we don't shot Jesus. We don't all shot Jesus. We shot something, but it's not Jesus. <laughs> but when, when someone push our button, we ought to be so full of Jesus that it's, it's just Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so he says here, he says here, uh, uh, un until, and then, and then the next thing, I'm moving, sound doctrine. A in verse 14, that henceforth we be no more children. Children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. How many understand that the winds of doctrine are blowing right now? Yes, They're blowing right now. And if you're not rooted and grounded in the word, in these last days, you can easily be swept away. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? With, with the advent of the Internet and social media and all the different social things that we see and hear. If you don't know your scripture, it is easy for you to be carried away into error. Amen. That's what Paul is saying. He says he says that henceforth we be no more children. And by the, the trickery of men. Uh, that word trickery means dice plan. We don't know anything about this, but but sometimes when people play dice, uh, they can use a loaded dice. 
I know we don't know anything about that, but but with a loaded <laughs> dice, loaded. dice, and that's what he's saying that false teachers use a loaded dice that uh, they don't play fair, uh -huh. and and if we don't know our Bible, it becomes uh, easy for us to be drawn into a cult or some type of uh, false belief system because Jesus said in the last days it's going to be marked by deception that many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ and beloved you have to know your Bible in fact the Bible says over in Thessalonians there shall be a great falling away in the last days and so we're in those days beloved where if we don't know the Bible if we have not discernment of the word of God, it's going to be easy for when that time come for even many uh, Christians, uh, infants to be brought into that uh, 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 latter day deception. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so you got to know your Bible. There's a cult, the black Hebrews right now, Mar couples I've married, uh, young men I've married. Uh, uh, and, and, and some of those young men are now in that, that system that believe that somehow we are the Jews. Uh, it's, it's a doctrine that 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 is. But but our young men are being swept into that because the, we don't know the scripture. When people come knock on our doors, riding bicycles in white shirts. Amen. Uh, they come. We don't know how to defend the gospel. We don't know. Come to my church or, or come see my pastor. But we have no idea how to defend the faith, how to uh, tell people what you believe and show it to them from the gospel. We don't know. We don't know because we have not studied the word of God. Uh, uh, g give me a cult member that's been a cult member uh, for 30 days and come talk to a Christian and they can speak wonders around us because when they come to church, this is all they do. They don't come to be entertained. They, they don't come to watch the show. They come to get in their book read their book, learn their book, get their material, and go out and spread their false doctrine. My love, and we don't know. We don't know. We're ignorant. We're blind to truth. We ask people. Some people don't know how to find uh, uh, Malachi, Zechariah. They don't know scripture. They don't know the Bible. They don't know. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Uh, uh, give me a concise uh, scriptural uh, 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 a testimony from scripture of salvation. Give me a, a, a scripture of what it means to be sanctified. Get, get, tell me in scripture uh, what, what, it, what, it, what it means to be glorified. T tell me these basic tenets of the faith, beloved, because we don't know. And so when deception comes, we're open to deception because we're not anchored in the truth. We're not in anybody's Bible study. We're not in anyone's thing. We're in, we, we, we got our face in the face book and not the book we spend we say we don't have time but we spend hours and hours scrolling online on that phone not in our bible and so when it hits beloved when it happens we will be prime candidates to be deceived because we do not know the truth we're not rooted and grounded in the truth we don't spend time in the truth. Can I get a witness? And, and so and so we're, we're, we're like children tossed to and fro by the culture, by what man says, by what NBC says and Fox says and, and what culture says. I'm saying, what's in the book? What does the book say? I don't care what they say. What does the word of God teach? So we're blinded. It's the blind leading the blind. Because our, our, our understanding is not based on truth. Culture is not truth. This is truth. This is the truth. The whole truth. <laughs> Nothing but the truth. But how much of this truth do you know? How much of the Bible do you know? How much? If Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons... Muslims, black Hebrews, Harry Krishners, they stand here. And they say, come tell me what you believe. How could we answer that? I'll tell you what I believe. I've been studying this thing day and night. Amen. It's time. 
It's time. Today, if you hear my voice, if he's calling you, beloved, I'm, I'm getting. And why, why do you do this, Pastor? Because I know what's coming. Deception is coming. Lies is coming. And so, so, so he says, henceforth we be no children, tossed to and fro uh, by every wind of doctrine, by the cunning work of Satan, by his, because Satan is able to make a, a, a lie look like the truth. And if you don't know the truth, you'll fall for it. And until the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says, he goes on to say, uh, beloved, he says the last thing, he says, but speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love. That word really means truth in it. It means to deal with the truth. It means to be true in doctrine and life, to follow the truth, to pursue the truth, to love the truth, to hold on to the truth, to live in truth, to express the truth, to deal truly. Jesus is the truth that we might grow up. Someone say grow up. Grow up. And I want to ask you to turn to your neighbor and say that. It might offend them. Offend them. But, but, but he says to grow up. That is the great call for churches. And, you know, when couples come to me a lot of times with issues, I could save them a lot of time and I could save me a lot of time by just telling them, grow up. When people come fighting in ministry, oh, pastor, do you know? Pastor, do you know? Oh, yes, yes. Grow up. On their job. I hate my boss. He is such a oh, what a wiener is my boss. Grow up. I'm gonna have you to do it. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, grow up. I was a child. I acted like a child. But when I became an adult, we did what? We put away childish things. You know, my, my job should be teaching you, coaching you, giving you scripture. But you know what most pastors do? We're cleaning up babies' messes. All over the place. Oh, my, I thought that was done. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Come on, administrators. Am I telling the truth? You can administrate because people under you are just immature. They don't come to work on time. And they want to leave early. Uh -huh. Let me see your phone, D. And most of the time, as soon as they get a break, Been there. Been there. Then they come have the nerve enough to come ask you for a raise. <laughs> Someone say loving testimony. So you speak the truth, but you got to speak it in love. Because love without truth, come on, parents, is rebellion. Okay, so you speak the truth, but you speak the truth in love. Okay, and so that's, that's what we do. So we, uh, and we grow up. Someone say grow up grow. unto him in all things. <laughs> and my last point, my last point is the power of God's pattern. This is the power of his pattern. He says grow up into all things, even the head which is Jesus. How many of you know that Jesus is the head of this church? Yes. That Pastor Brooks is not the head of the church, but Jesus is the head of the church. In fact, if you have a problem, you need to take it to who? To who? <laughs> no, you can, take, you can break it to me. But Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is the what? He's the head. He's in control. He's the head of the. So we as elders, what we do is we go and we pray and we say, Lord, what do you want? We, we need to hear from the head. We need for the Lord to tell us what he wants to do with his body.
OK, so so look, look at this last verse. This is it. He said, from whom the whole body, someone say the whole body, fitly joined together. So we're all fitly joined together. Every part of us that's been born again has been placed in the body of Christ. Uh, you could be a, a mouth. You could be an ear. You could be a hand. You could be a nose. You could be a, a toe. You could be a feet. You could be an organ. You could be a kidney. You can be whatever God has placed you in the body to do. But every believer has been placed in the body of Christ fitly joined together. And the, and the scripture says compacted. That means uh, that, that, that we have been united or the word means to be knit together or weaved together. And so this process in which the, uh, the members of the body of Christ are being joined closely together for growing uh, constantly in a vital organic un union is brought about by every joint that supplies. So the joint that supplies our body is critical. So every joint supplies. So everyone that's in the body, you supply something to the body that if you're not supplying. In fact, let's go on in the text. It says every joint supplies uh, according to the operation uh, of the measure uh, that's in Christ Jesus. So when he's saying every joint supplies. So so what he's saying here is it, like what happened in Baltimore the other day when that ship ran into the bridge, it affected the supply channel for everyone because it, it clogged up everything. And when you're not exercising your spiritual gift, then, then someone else in the body is not being blessed because you are the only one that can bring that gift that God has given you to the rest of the body. Does that make sense? So if you have the gift of mercy, that you can understand the emotional state of other people, if you're not functioning, exercising in that gift, somebody in the body will not flow or receive that mercy because you're not uh, exercising the gift of mercy, uh, supplying that to the body. If you're not functioning and connected to the body and being used of God in your spiritual gift, then someone in the body uh, will not receive mercy. If your gift is encouragement and, and you're not functioning in that gift of encouragement, then someone in the body will not be encouraged. If you have the gift of helps and you're not exercising your gift, then someone in the body will not be helped. If, if you have the gift of wisdom, knowledge, then, then someone in the body will be deprived of your knowledge and your wisdom. So if you're not functioning in the call that God has gifted you to function in, then, then the body cannot uh, function properly because you're not in its right place. If my hand is over here not doing what my hand is supposed to do, then my body cannot function because my hand and my fingers are not functioning according to the body. And so the, the Lord is the head of the body. The brain tells the body what to do. It tells our feet to walk, our hand to reach, our mouth to speak, our, 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 our ear to, to uh, listen, our nose to smell. All of that is directed by the head and we're connected to the head. And so the body has to function. But if there's one member of the body not doing what he or she is called to do, then the body will not function properly because you're not in place doing what God has called you to do. And the body of Christ here at the community church cannot function the way God has intended for it to function. And so you are important to what God wants to do in his purpose in these last days. But you got to get out of the spectator chair. You got to get into active office and service. Know your gift. Plug into your gift. Use your gift. Develop your gift and your talent. Because listen, beloved, you get your greatest joy out of doing what God has gifted you to do. You get your greatest joy. Some of you are frustrated. Some of you are angry. Some of you feel like uh, you're not serving God. You're not you, you're not. you haven't fulfilled your purpose and your call on on earth. And you're just frustrated. And just it's because you're not in the right place doing what God has called you to do in this season. Amen. You got to get in. You got to get connected. You got to get in your position. You got to get in your place in order for God to use you. And 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 from the head flows the the life and nourishment of Christ. But you're the one. Your ship 
has to be the ship that's going to bring it. If you don't bring it, it's not going to get to the rest of the body. So that's how important you are. That's how valuable you are to the body that if you get mad, if you get upset, if you don't grow, if you stay immature, if you say because that person did this, that person said that, I'm going to take my toys and go home and sit down Then the body. That's why you have to mature in the body because we're closely united and knit together in this body. Oh, I don't want my hand to get upset to say, uh, I'm not going to work with the rest of the body. You hurt me. You've been using me. You've been washing me. You've been making me do all kinds of stuff. And look at the eye. It's not doing anything. Look, look at the feet. It's not doing anything. Look at the kidneys. They, they, yeah, they, they, but, but, but no, I need all the body to function and to operate according to how God has designed the body to work. Can I get a witness? And so when it's working, beloved, it's a beautiful thing. So, so he's calling us this Wednesday. We're going to come and we're going to uh, hopefully everyone will be here. And we're going to talk about our spiritual gift, our spiritual calling, where you can get plugged into the body. Where God wants to use you is so important because you know what? The day of judgment, the beam of seat judgment, first Corinthians chapter three, all the saints are going to be called. Now, these are saints. This is the this is the judgment you want to be at. You don't want to be at the next one coming. The great white throne. That's where those those names are not in the book. Those that are not saved. You don't want to be at that one. The saints will be at this. And the rapture. The first thing that's going to happen, according to scripture, is that we'll get judged for our works. So every word we've said, every thought we've thought, every deed we've had, every attitude, the recording angels are writing that down. And there'll be books that will be open of everything. Because remember, Scripture says you'll give account of every idle word. Every idle word. And, and so there's a recording. Anytime. We're saved, right? We got saved at Calvary. We're saved. I mean, our sin's been washed away. But this is a judgment of our works after we get saved. So from the point we get saved to the point that we get raptured, the recording angels have recorded everything we've ever said, done, thought. Because remember, the thing about Jesus that blew people away, he knew their thoughts. See, right now he knows everything we're thinking. Good or bad. Good or bad. So he knows. And so we have to give an account. And so the Bible says all of our works will pass through fire. And that which we've done for our self-glory, self-effort, will get burned up. Because God's looking at motives. Why do we do what we do? Do we do it for his glory or for my glory? Do we do it to be seen of man or do we really do it for the glory of God? And, if, and the glory of God has to be such that it's what the Holy Spirit does in us, what the Father does through us. And all that he's done will pass through the fire, gold, silver, precious stone. But all that we've done in self, for self-glory, self-promotion, self will see, <laughs> see, you can't serve God. I can't serve God. In sin. Now we all fall and come short of the glory, right? There's none, right? But but if my life is sinful, in fact, it's scary to be up here in God's presence and He knows all about my life. That's why don't don't many come, don't let there be many teachers. Don't they let, let there be many on stage. Because we're going to get the stricter judgment because right. we're before people. Because right. if people come to church and say, man, I saw a brother, man. I, you know, but, you know, so. Because <laughs> the thing is, listen, we don't want to be a stumbling block. That's right. yes, sir. So if my lifestyle is not right, yes, I really need to go get my life together. Before I clam those stairs and come up in this pulpit. Because God doesn't play. The wages of sin and death starts when you sin. 
Death means the decay process start in your life the, the moment you start sinning until you repent. Death separates us from God. Sin does. Okay? So please, please listen to me. Please. All of us from the back to the front, we first have to deal with the sin in our life. Amen. Don't, don't play games with God. Who we are out there is who we should be in here. My private life got to match my public life. A, a hypocrite is someone that wears a mask on the stage of life, pretending that he's someone that he's not in order to impress people. I'm giving permission to everyone, including myself, to take the mask down. And as the young people say, let's be real. Let's be real. That's where it starts. So if you're going to exercise your gift and be part of this body, that's where it, so it has to be a right relationship with God. And God cannot have a relationship with a phony. Can't have a relationship with a phony. But take someone that was a harlot and came in the house with all these religious folks. He couldn't stop crying until she let down her hair. She got on her feet and she washed his feet. And uh, all the religious folks said, if he was a prophet, he would know what kind of woman that was. And Jesus said at the end, he who has been forgiven much will love much. And so that's where it starts, in honesty. Where are, we, where are we in our relationship with God? Where are we? Are we pleasing him? Are we doing the things he told us to do? Or are we doing things that are not pleasing him? Where are we? So everyone's standing, everyone's standing. My brothers come to the front. I want everyone to get in this thing called the body and function, exercise your gift and your call. But if sin is in your life, then the Lord won't even hear your prayers. He won't hear your prayers till you deal with it. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we lie. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess those sins, he just and faithful to forgive us. So I'm starting with myself. I want all of us. We're going to have communion in a little bit. Communion is a time to examine our heart. In fact, Paul says, if you don't examine yourself and you drink it, you're really drinking judgment unto yourself. You bring it, bringing curses, sickness, disease, chastisement, those things. If you don't examine your heart and, and repent of your sin, it's a serious thing, beloved. God is holy. He's holy. He's not to be played with. He's not to be played with. So you can bring the lights down a little bit because we don't want to see what God is doing here at this altar. It's between them and God. But if you're here this morning and you would say, Lord Jesus, I just want to get right. I just want to know that I know that I know there's nothing between you and I. I don't care who's looking. I don't care who's not looking, but I just want my heart to be pure. I want to be holy. I want to be right. So if that's you, I want you to make your way to the altar. I want you to make your way to the altar. Don't look around to see who's coming, who's not coming. And this prepares us for communion too. This prepares us for communion. And if you're here, beloved, just make your way down. Just make your way down. But I want to be right with God. I want to be right with one another. There's some, there's some issues in my heart right now. That's not right. It's not right. It's not right. And I need to get it right today. Today, if you hear my voice, heart not your heart. And so if you're out there, beloved, and you just... 
know that there's some things the Lord has to fix. I want you to come. It's a call to repentance. It's a call to get right with God. And sometimes we might have to step out of something to get right. But sin is like leaven. It can affect the whole church. It can affect the whole church. And if you don't deal with it, it spreads like leaven. So those of us in ministry, especially. So if you're here, beloved, we're just going to take another minute or two. You would just say, I feel the, <clears throat> the auction of the Holy Spirit, the tug of the Spirit. Going to have an eclipse on Monday. I don't know. But there are signs that Jesus said in the last days, you'll see these things happen. You'll see the earthquakes in New York and New Jersey and just things happening that are extraordinary in our time. We're seeing those things. Russia and Israel at war. So if you're here, beloved, you make your way down. You make your way down. It's, it's, it's not about how long you've been in the church. If you're in the church, it's not that. Church won't save anybody. This building, this thing won't save anyone. It's your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's what's going to save you. Coming to church is good, but I can go sit in my garage and I'll never become a car. Because you can come and sit in a church building, but that doesn't make you saved. You have to, you have to take an act, a step of faith. So if God is calling you, I know this is hard. I know this is hard, but God is calling you. I, I don't have time. I don't know if I'll be here next week. We can't take for granted. This might be my last sermon. And so I want my last sermon to be a sermon that people will get right with God. People will get saved. People will deal with sin in their lives, iniquity. People will get healed and delivered. And so if you're here, beloved, anyone else, anyone else, make your way to the altar. Make your way to the altar. Today is a day of salvation. If you hear my voice, heart not your heart. God will save you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. And if, if all of this was just for you, if all of this was just for you, God would have still done it. Made us all get dressed up. Made me work on this sermon all week. But, but if it was just for you, if it was just for you. He would have done all this for you because he said he left the 99 and he went after the one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, intercessors. Pray right now. Pray. Come on, prayer warriors. Pray. Pray right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Help us, Lord. Help us. Oh, God. Save, God. Save. God, deliver, God. Right now. Come on, I want you to start praying for your loved ones. Come on, start praying. Praying that everyone be brought in the ark. Come on, start praying now. Come on, pray for those that are not saved in your family. Begin to pray now. Pray that God will bring them. Beloved, we're in the last days. We don't know about tomorrow. We don't know if we have tomorrow. Today, if you hear my voice, heart not your heart. And so today, today, in hell, the word will be tomorrow, 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 and tomorrow will never come. It'll be too late. It'll be too late. So if we love our loved ones, if we love them, beloved, if we love them, we want them saved. We want them right with God. If we love our loved ones. Come on, pray for that daughter. Pray for that son. Pray for that grandson. Pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. God will bring them in. God will bring them in. Thank you. Those online, you can do the same thing. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you just call upon the name of Jesus and say, Lord, save me, forgive me of my sin. 
give me eternal life. God, I accept the gift of your son and I receive him as Lord and Savior. That act of faith will save you. It will save you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated as quickly we turn and we prepare for communion. So we encourage you, if you can, make it on Wednesday at 6. So we'll go over the gifts and we want everyone plugged in, everyone plugged in, doing what God has called you to do. And so we'll, we'll do that at 6 in lieu of the small group studies. And um, so we, we will be here at 6 to do that. And so we, we're encouraging, inviting young and old to come and be a part of that. So think about the message, beloved. Think and let it sink into your heart, your heart and your soul. Think about it. Just, Lord, cleanse me, wash me. Lord, heal me and deliver me. He'll do it, beloved. He'll do it. What you're holding represents his body and his blood. That's it. That's it. Yes. So communion is communion is a great time that we come and we renew our covenant with the Lord. We renew that covenant. In the blood he shed and in the choir saying the blood still works. It does. But it's more than a song, beloved. It's more than a song. That blood cost Jesus his life, and the price he paid, for those stripes and all that he endured on Calvary for you and I. So don't take the blood lightly. Don't take it lightly. If it was the blood of my mother, I would, I would say don't take it lightly. She shared, she shared her blood. It was the blood of my father, my, my wife, my daughters. I say, don't take it lightly. But this was the blood of God's son. This was the precious blood of Christ. So don't take it lightly, beloved. If it was the blood of, of, of a president, it would be precious. But this is the blood of God's own son. That he shed because he loves you and he gave his life for you in order to redeem you and bring you back. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, the Bible says the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. My desire, I wish someone could sing that. And then Sister Moody, Brother Ward started singing. How many believe that he loves you? How many believe that? That even though we had to speak the truth, we spoke it in love. We spoke it in love. Yes, he is. That's it. Oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Come on, come on, church. He loves me more. Oh, he, he loves me. 
Jesus. Take it in your Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. that believe that that he will not give us over to ourselves or sin or this world he loves us too much and so sometimes he will wound us hurt us in order to heal us and so in the midst of all of this father we thank you we thank you for your great love, and your great mercy. And Father, we ask now, because of Calvary, that we can come running to the cross. Some asking, what must I do to be saved? God, we pray now for the saints. We pray that you would strengthen them in this covenant relationship. You renew their, their walk, you renew their life, their strength. God, as we eat now, this which symbolize your bread, your, your body and this bread and this juice that symbolize your blood that we be nourished strengthened in our faith God that not only we know your love for us but you'll know our love for you God we're your bride that you're coming soon to claim so we want to walk in purity like these sisters on this front row what they have on the outward side we want our hearts to be pure. And Isaiah says, come let us reason together. Even though your sin are red like crimson, they shall be white like snow. So God, we take a moment. And if there's anyone in the house right now that needs to confess something, something in our lives that's not right, that we're doing, that's not pleasing to God, let's take a moment and confess that sin. And when you confess it, you agree with God, first of all, that it's wrong, that it's sinful. And then confessing, you're going to change your mind about it. You're going to do something about it. You're going to do something about it. So whatever it is, beloved, the Holy Spirit has put his hand on it. You need to own up to it. So it's not my father, not my brother, but it's me standing in the need of prayer. Got to heal that thing, got to restore, and got to fix it. Father, do it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11, beginning with verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take now and eat and be healed. After the same manner also he took the cup which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Take now and drink and be cleansed. Amen. Shall we stand? Again, we thank God for your presence. And again, we want to continue to strongly encourage you to come out on Wednesday for our fellowship night. Our small groups are helping to host this for all of our members on our gift test. How many in the house would like to know your spiritual gift? Come on. How many would like to really know 
where you're gifted in. Everybody will be here on Wednesday at six. We'll only keep you an hour or less. So if you can, amen. Father God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your word, God. Help us to heed and to hear, to hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our midst. And to you be, belong all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we'll give you glory for it in Jesus' name. And the saint said, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you.